Hello and welcome, RF Generation friends and family. It's I, Neo Magic Warrior, and uh, we're here for something a little different than usual today. Uh, it's actually, should have unpacked this ahead of time, a hardware review uh, because I got a hold of an Atari VCS from uh, a friend of mine. Uh, shout out to my coworker Kyle. Um, the reason that I have his VCS right now, I mean, he just got it. Uh, the reason that I have this is because he received this and uh, it wasn't working. Uh, Kyle is not a very, very tech-savvy person. Uh, tech-savvy enough, but, like, not terribly. Uh, and for whatever reason, uh, the BIOS wasn't flashed correctly on this. So, uh, I said that I would take a look at it because customer service gave him all the instructions. He went, ah, that's, that's too much for me. Uh, because he's a dad and he bought this for his, like, eight-year-old kid. Um, which is, which is one of my big complaints with this is that uh, he bought this for an eight-year-old, and this clearly is not the system that I would have given an eight-year-old, but, um, this, uh, for those of you who don't know, this has got, like, a full Ryzen processor. This is, this is a computer. Uh, you can upgrade the RAM, you can upgrade the storage, you can upgrade all sorts of stuff on this. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy back in. And what also comes in the box, uh, I forgot to look up how expensive this thing is, so we're gonna quick do that real quick. Because I should have... Let's look at how much this thing is. Uh, Atari VCS. <laughs> uh, shop. Of course this is going to take me for... Sure, this, this is the black walnut. Uh, this is $400? Wow! Sorry, we're, we're doing... Um, I didn't mention, this is kind of my like second impressions. Because I turned this on enough that I could get it working, I could make sure that everything's good, I put everything together so that I made sure that everything was set up on the streaming rig, and now we're going to stream. Everything works, everything's good. Uh, what you get in the box is this uh, super neat Atari. I'm going to try and pull up specs here, uh, like I should have done. Uh... Shows shows me. Uh, it's a AMD Raven Ridge Two, uh, with a Ryzen GPU, thirty two gigs of storage, um, eight gigs DDR four RAM. Uh, the RAM and the storage are upgradable. Uh, but it's it's this is a computer, is what this is, and this is really more. The it it's weird. This was marketed to consumers, kind of in a weird way where it's like, hey, play your old Atari games like you would with an Atari flashback. But it's also mo targeted to, like, modders and people who are going to do all sorts of cool stuff with this. Uh, which brings me, I'm going to segue ahead uh, to kind of one of my questions. Uh, this reminds me of another product that came out uh, with a similar premise to what is happening here. Uh, right here. The Ouya. And I know that if anybody from Atari watches this video, I'm going to get all sorts of hate mail for that comparison. But this little box is a computer that was designed to be open source and give you all sorts of upgradability and had its own game front store. And it's real similar to this VCS. Granted, like this thing is a paperweight at this point because this tech is outdated. And I've... I, I use this for very, very specific reasons. But we're going to go through uh, some of the other stuff. Uh, what does come in the box, and I will say, uh, is a, uh, a standard controller. Um, this thing feels not great. Uh, it is solid. I'll, I'll give it that. It's very solid. I'm going to bring it up to the thing here. Uh, the buttons, uh, the analog sticks feel actually very good. They have good snap to them. Uh, the buttons themselves feel okay. Uh, this D-pad, I don't know who thought a circle, a, a circle with a flat rubber coating and four little tiny nubs that are going to wear off instantly was a good idea. Um, the triggers feel kind of squishy 
and bumpers feel kind of bad. Like, this doesn't... This feels like cheap knockoff third-party Xbox One controller is what this feels like. The layout is exactly an Xbox One. This D-pad is inexcusable. We're in 2021. Put, put a D-pad on your product. Uh, but what I will say is very nice is this joystick. Uh, I have one complaint with it is that it's a little loose feeling. Uh, but it is a little loose feeling because not only does this joystick, uh, it has the front button that you would expect. It's got a, a, a back and a menu button, a, a hamburger button, uh, the Atari, the, the pairing and like on off button. Uh, it also has a bumper on the side, which is really cool to have. So when you're holding this, like I'm going to turn here, uh, you, you have your, your hand here and you have an extra button and it's a brilliant position for this button. Uh, the joystick also, in, it, it is a little wiggly and a little loose, but it also rotates and I can't get this on camera like at all. There's no, there's no way to do it, but it's a potentiometer in the center as well so that you can play your breakout and your pong and all of that. Um, complaints that I have with both controllers actually, uh, and I, I will say, they give you one hell of an extension cord, of a, a USB cord. Uh, both the controllers are Bluetooth, by the way. Um, but they do give you one heck of a of a thick, nice, high-quality uh, micro-USB uh, cord <laughs> for each of these. Um, but if I had to complain about anything, it's that the connection slots on both of these... They're in these nice recessed areas, and they are so firm. You feel like something's not aligned correctly, or something's going to break or bend or something. Uh, and I'm not a huge fan of that, like, at all. Uh, the controllers uh, seem to be going for about 60 bucks a piece, if you wanted them separately. Uh, I, I don't see why you would buy this for any reason at all. Uh, I absolutely understand why you would buy one of these. Um... It seems a little expensive, but the potentiometer in the middle it seems like a great way to play some games. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make sure that my TV turns on here, because it idled off. We're going to go ahead, and I want to I wanna give everybody the full Atari VCS experience here. Uh, but one of the other things, while we're, while we're loading up, and one of the questions that I am going to ask here is, why would you spend $300 on this? Or four hundred dollars, I think it was four hundred. What? Now I gotta relook it up. <laughs> History. It's four hundred dollars. So you've got a hundred and twenty dollars in controllers and effectively three hundred dollars in system. The question that we're gonna ask is why wouldn't you just buy a Raspberry Pi? That is, that is the answer, and I understand that people are like, oh, no, well, you have to tinker, and you got to do this. This all comes okay out of the box, and it didn't. This didn't. This was proof positive that it didn't. This is a tinkerer's machine. It's being sold as a tinkerer's machine. We need to evaluate it as if it is. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and flip that over, and you guys don't need to see my ugly mug anymore. What I am going to do, uh, the power button, unfortunately, is located in the back of this thing. Uh, and I'm going to pull my microphone a little closer to the actual VCS so that you can hear when I hit the power button. Hopefully this picks up. Uh, that is fan noise. Uh, and it revs up to full, basically, off of nothing. Uh, so there we go. There's our Atari logo. But yeah, that fan is obnoxiously loud to start. Um, so we get that. Uh, we have blacked out. I've got a black screen still. Okay, there we go. Cool. We've got a cool little Atari logo. I have uh, connected my controller by pressing the Atari button. You can see that it is lit up. And then I'm going to press it. It does give you a, a key out on this controller. I think it's doing this every single time simply because I haven't created an account on here. Um, but this could potentially be what it does. You can choose your language every time. Um, it's going to search for networks. Um, I'm going to click on mine here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to 
Maybe we'll blur that. I don't think we'll blur that. Nobody knows what the password is. Uh, we're creating a... We're using the guest account because I don't want to create anything on a, a co-worker's VCS. And so here's where we're at. Um, and we get this this home this home page here. Uh, we're going to go ahead. We're going to look through. Uh, let's take a look through the system settings. You get your account information. You get uh, display. Uh, it does do Ultra HD for some reason if you want Pong in Ultra HD. Uh, network, we've got our, our Wi-Fi. This thing also has Ethernet, which I probably should have used. Uh, it is wireless. Uh, you can pair and update new controllers. Uh, and then storage. Um, I am going to go back. But yeah, you've, you've got like a 32 gig SSD. It's pretty rad. Um, there's a store that we're going to take a quick look at here. Um, and you can you can buy a bunch of games. As I, as I go through, like, the games, let's, let's go to see all. And you can use this as, like, a streaming device. So, in case, for whatever reason, you don't have enough of them in your house. Uh, but this, again, this is why I pulled out that, uh... This is absolutely why I pulled out... Um... What's it called? The, the Ouya. This, this smacks of an Ouya store. This absolutely just looks like an Ouya store. It's doing everything that an Ouya does. Or did. And I have a feeling it's going to go the same way. Uh, navigating menus is not the greatest with uh, an Atari joystick. But we'll, we'll play with the other controller in a minute. Uh, our home page and our games page. I, I do kind of like these... These weird gray screens, but it does come with the Atari VCS Vault program that we're going to launch. Um, so let's go ahead and launch that. So here we go. We've got we've got some Atari logo in going on. Uh, it did come packed real well, I should say. That was also very nice. Um, also, as we get into it, there's some other features with this controller that's super cool. So, we have uh, a bunch of uh, Atari arcade games, and we're, we're going to get into some of these. Uh, especially because I want to see how a few of these control, especially with this joystick. Um, Temp Tempest is going to be fantastic. Um, it is the menu button to move down. You get, you get a bunch of... Atari console games, uh, only 2600s. Um, these I think are significantly less valuable than than the the other the arcade titles, uh, simply because a lot of them are are duplicated, and even more, you can in in the right store, Atari games are a dollar ninety nine or two dollars or something like that most of the time. A few of these are a little bit more expensive, um, but you're also only getting a lot of the Atari company branded games, so there is no pitfall on here. There is no, none of the Activision games that you want are on this system to start. And yes, I know we can add them, but we're, we're looking at this as a, uh, also there's a list and kind of a genre list that you can go through in this ugly text format um but but you're not getting any of those aftermarket games that you really want and that you think of uh again you're not getting pitfall what and yes you can add these things but we went over this this is an out of the box if if you're looking at this kind of out of the box what do you get um we're gonna play asteroids because it's my favorite game uh, on this system uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start a one-player game of Asteroids. Um, and so, I will say, the joystick feels nice in the hand. Uh, uh, uh. I am not used to playing Asteroids with said joystick. Uh, I'm used to buttons, so this is uh, a little different. Uh, the vibration motor, I do want to... I'm going to try and... Put this up close to the microphone. Uh, the action button does not make a whole heck of a lot of noise, which is nice. Uh, the hyperspace button is on that trigger. I kind of want 
So there we go. Oh, there we go. I can just go forward. But you can hear that, that vibration motor. It's real strong. Uh, there's actually, like, really nice lights on this controller, too, that show it lighting up. Uh, right around the ring as you as you move the controller. It's, it's really neat. And it's a really nice effect. Uh, but because you're looking at a TV screen, you'll never see it. <laughs> uh, and I talked through that, so I died. Uh... Well, of course we need to put in our initials real quick. Um, because what kind of gamer would we be if we didn't do that? Uh, absolutely. Cool. Good. Good. Uh, we're gonna go back to the main menu because we could play Asteroids Forever. Uh, I wanna play... We're gonna play a... A game that is clearly designed for... Uh, we could play Pong. I think we're gonna play some some super breakout just that way you can see the the smoothness on the yeah it this is a very very smooth um potentiometer come on now oh, we're, we're changing modes or something there we go okay there we go uh i am not great at this So we we do get uh, it is a little a little touchy uh, now that I'm now that I'm really getting into it it's it's such a long bat that you're using uh, you cannot use the the left and right on it you must use the rotation uh, I am apparently very bad at this so we're gonna put another coin in and we're gonna see if we can do anything. Uh, I'm apparently very bad while talking, also. Um, but this is this is definitely uh, better than using left and right on something. I'll I'll give it that absolutely. Um, don't know how I saved that. That was that was good. Good. Thank thank you. Uh, rules of super breakout. We're 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 serviceable now. Okay. Things are things are going our way. Nope. Uh, not going our way anymore. We've, we've got a whopping 12 points here. 13. Okay. We can we can do this. But, I mean, you can kind of see, like, there's, there's some jerkiness to these motions. And I'm trying to be as smooth as I possibly can with this. And it is absolutely sneeze on it and it runs across the screen sensitive. Um, it's actually, like, kind of... Kind of difficult to control. Uh, it is that sensitive. Even, like, I'm going to try and, like, slowly move it. You can see there's some left to right jerk. Um, let's try and, like, slowly move this. You can see it kind of back and forth thing. So let's go ahead. We're going to go back to the main menu. I'm going to... Nope. Oh, what did I do? Oh. I shut the controller off, but also went back to the menu dashboard. I'm going to turn the actual controller on, and we're going to see how... See if that guy syncs correctly. I hope so. We're going to find out. Uh, Alright, so he's not syncing correctly, even though I've sunk him to this VCS before. So that means we're just going to... We're going to go wired, um, because that always works. <laughs> Uh, so you can see there are problems with this system. There we go. We are wired and connected. Alright, so here we are. Let's play... Let's, let's play something where we can... Let's try a... Let's try a missile command. That seems like a good thing to test out some... some analog capabilities here. Uh, you cannot use a trigger button to fire. Uh, although I'm sure there's probably a way to remap buttons for a lot of these. Uh, this this analog stick does feel very responsive. And the analog to uh, ball mouse feel, so to speak, here. Um, these buttons are still atrocious. I can absolutely say that this is garbage buttons. I am 
terrible at missile command. But we're doing a thing. So that's that's definitely serviceable. Uh, this D-pad is disgusting to touch. Uh, it's in, in five to ten years, this will be terrible. Uh, I am going to play... We are going to play a game of Pong, because I want to see how the analog stick handles the the digital movement of... Well, <laughs> that happened. Yeah. Uh, uh, you cannot use a D-pad with this. You must use an analog stick. Okay. Uh, it is basically impossible to make this move in a a smooth means, like a like a quick little, like even like click little click little flicks are difficult here, and I don't know how much this is coming through. Uh, as far as the recording, but hopefully enough. Alright, so we've messed around on there. Oh, nope, I'm going back into Pong. Main menu. <laughs> we've messed around there. I uh, know we don't want to quit. I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down again. He's in action on the right. Hey, no. Switch between... Oh, the X button now. Okay. Let's, let's look at some of these. Um, is there a... I didn't see it when I first ran through. I don't know if Kaboom's on... Oh, wait, no, Kaboom's, uh... Yeah, Kaboom's Activision, I believe. I'm almost positive. Wait, you've got some, some weird ones, like Slot Machine. Uh, some of these... Some of these are just never gonna... Steeplechase. You're not gonna play Steeplechase. Nobody... Nobody wants to play that. Um, uh, Sword Quest, Earth and Fire World, or... And Waterworld are kind of cool to have on here, uh, but and and you do get these manuals, which is very nice. You do get to to read the manual for Waterworld while it loads here, um, which which is kind of cool. You get the 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 comic books to all of them. So I, I will say that those are those are an interesting touch. Video pinball. Let's let's play some Yars Revenge here. Oh no, I hit manual. That that is my fault. Uh, you do get the dip switch menu uh, because obviously you can't. Yeah, you you can't get a. Uh... And we'll, we'll keep all the dip switches there. Yeah. There uh, you do have to hit increase. No. Oh, you have to use the D-pad for this. Gross! So you have to use the analog stick for some, the D-pad for others. That's kind of not great. Come on, ah. I died. That is, that is not my favorite. And, ouch! It's been a while since I played Yard's Revenge. Uh, and I am bad at it. And this is dark. I'm, it looks dark on the recording, too, but this is just dark. Come on. Ow. Well, I am very bad at this, apparently. This game is not forgiving. There are significantly better people equipped to to play Yard's Revenge. Ah! No! I, I want I want this to happen. We're gonna do this. We're gonna beat this. I run directly into the the target. Come on. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this. 
Got. We did it! We hit him. Got him. Sorry, I wanted the flash. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's that's Yars Revenge. This controller, this D-pad is awful, and you have to use it. Uh, for anything, let's let's put just old school asteroids on here. Yes, you must use the D-pad on this system. Uh, it's as terrible as it is for anything that would require the digital input of the Atari joystick. Oh, that's really, really upsetting. I mean, at least it uses the A button, but come on. No, no dual program analog sticks and D-pads and... That is... That is absolutely awful. And this D-pad, this rubberized coating on this wheel is going to wear off the heartbeat. I'm afraid that I'm going to wear it off uh, with my terrible, rubby, sweaty hands uh, before an eight-year-old gets to be upset with this uh, and instantly breaks that Atari controller uh, because it feels like, I mean, like, the things feel okay, but that joystick will probably come out of calibration. It's, it's gonna be a problem. I, I don't see that holding up over time at all. But overall, I mean, that's that's the Atari VCS. Um, let me let me come back up, I guess. Uh, also, let me let me figure out how you shut this thing down. Cause I have not figured that out yet. Oh, okay. There were there were controls in there. Hold on. Let me go back. Uh, there's Circus Atari. Hold on. We're gonna go. We're gonna go back. Let me see. Is everything default? Centipede, controls. Okay, yeah, you can you can change these, but you have to go through and change every one of them. I mean that's that's kinda neat and you can change the buttons. Alright, so you can remap everything. Um Game Selection Classic, what's that? Hold on. We're gonna we're gonna go. We're gonna hit play here. What's classic game? Oh, uh, that's kind of kind of cute. You get. That's that's kind of cute. That you get the the thing, and yes, it does. It does map your. Uh, although, boy, does it not map. It only maps four directions. It doesn't map anal or diagonals well at all. Um, and the Atari, like, handled th diagonals fairly well on Centipede. Sorry, I'm glad I, uh, I'm glad I figured that one out. So we're gonna go back up here. We're gonna exit to the dashboard. We're gonna figure out how to shut this thing down from a menu. Because there has to be a menu shut down as opposed to just putting a button. I'm probably gonna miss it. General settings, maybe. No. Storage. No. Oh, hold on. Power. There we go. There it is. We can sleep it, we can restart it, or we can turn it off. We're going to go ahead and turn this off so that I can box it up and give it back to a coworker. Uh, but let me come on back up and uh, give you my thoughts. Yeah, this is... This, this box is super neat. Um, that fan only runs real weird at the beginning, but... It, it does have a, a pretty hefty fan in it, uh, somewhere at about here. Uh, but this this was interesting. I, I do like the build quality of this system. Uh, it, it feels feels very uh, very firm and very strong, very heavy, very heavy system. Um, it does have, uh, like I said, it's the uh, you've got two USBs here. You've got an HDMI, an Ethernet, an AC. Uh, it's a barrel jack AC, which, it's, uh, I guess because of the form factor, but power. Um, pros, I mean, like, this is this is definitely interesting. Uh, uh, pros, these USB cables are super long. Uh, con, it's a it's mini, or it's a micro USB, like USB-C, come on. Everything should be USB-C at this point. Um, that power jack could be USB-C, probably. Uh, as I get messages on my phone. Uh, this controller 
is good. I wish it was a little heavier. Uh, I wish it didn't... You can hear it rattling around. I, I'm going to mute my phone here. But you can hear it, that, that rattle, that jiggle uh, of this joystick. And also, it shows up dust and fingerprints like crazy. Um, just, just putting it out there. Uh, I haven't tested battery life on either of these because I haven't played this for long enough to know. Um, for $400, $400 is a lot of money. I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there. Uh, that Ouya was free and can play all of these games on it. I'll, I'll be honest. And it's even, even as terrible as the Ouya was, there's still, there's still a D-pad, a discreet D-pad buttons. There's a cross here. They did something right. Yeah, this controller is bad. I'm gonna be honest. Like this is this is not a good controller at all. Um, but I mean, as far as if you wanted like a mini PC to just play Atari stuff on, if you can find an Ouya, uh, you could do that. But I mean, why? Why in the world does the Atari VCS exist? in a world with Raspberry Pis. And I know technically you're buying ROMs and we're not gonna get into the legality of ROMs here, but you can legally buy these files because Atari sells other products. There's there's one on, on Micro Center. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up. I need to know the name of it. Because uh, Micro Center has a bunch of products from Atari, there's the the ultimate arc, dual arcade fight stick with trackball, and it includes a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and a 32 gig micro uh, SD card, and all of the files with 140 Atari games. That's 180 dollars. You get a full size arcade like stick that's real nice. You get and it's a dual arcade stick. You get a trackball, which is unheard of. And you get a Raspberry Pi with an official way to play these games. Why? Why does this exist? I am out... I am just confused. Like, this is this is ridiculous. Why? I'm just scrolling through their stuff. The Atari Fight Stick with Trackball Graphics, 40 bucks. Or... Uh, what do we got here? It's, but like they, they sell a product where they just sell you a Raspberry Pi and a micro SD card. Why? Why does this exist? It's nice. I'm sure you could do all sorts of really cool stuff with it. And I know emulation on this thing is pretty rad and it's, it's neat and it, you can put windows on it and you can put Ubuntu or any kind of Linux distro or heck if you're really feeling froggy and you're bored you could put Mac on it but I don't think that's who is buying this I think the people who are buying this think it's an Atari flashback and they think that's a it's kind of a problem because if you want a project computer you're either going to build a mini PC or you're going to buy one of these and at at 400, if you want to play Atari games, this is not the way to do it. It's super weird. It's such a weird product. Um, and I hate to rag on it because it's relatively okay. Except that controller's bad. Uh, but yeah, that was that was the Atari VCS. Uh, let me know if you guys like this kind of video. Uh, maybe I'll do some more. Uh, but until the next time, uh, catch you later, RF Gen friends.